In this lesson, we're going to use the Houdini engine to load uh, the Brickify asset into other applications. Here we use the Houdini engine menu to go and get the Brickify digital asset and open that into Maya. Now when we bring it in here, uh, you'll see there it is in the viewport. Now we've lost some things. The color, uh, point color information doesn't work with the plugin, so we're not getting that, but we will see some of the other features available. Now at first the interface, uh, to get that interface you've got to click on the attribute editor in Maya uh, and there we see it. And so as you can see the color is not having any effect. But the animation of the bricks does have an effect and so we can do that. Let's bump the number up to 20 and if we cycle through this we'll see it gets part way there. Let's maybe bump that up to 40. So we only have 120 frames here. And there we go. So we've got that working well. So the way Houdini Engine works is every time we uh, touch a parameter here in, in Maya, uh, Houdini is in the background cooking the results. So here we can take an object inside Maya, we're going to take this torus and we're going to use as a custom shape. Now the way that works is first we, we need to select the, the torus, then the Brickify, and then set to selection. And now we've got that working. Now if we select the torus we can press H to hide that and we can take the torus parameters and make some changes and watch it update. So every time we're updating this and who you know the shape needs to recook, Houdini is behind the scenes doing its job. So there's Houdini still a part of this, uh, but it is being connected in the background. And there you go. You're brickifying a shape here in Maya. Uh, this can also work with other uh, tools such as um, Unreal Engine. So here we bring the Brickify tool and we import that in. And then we drag that into the 3D scene here in Unreal. And what's nice is that we're using a, a tool we developed, an artist developed inside of, of Houdini. And this is now available uh, inside a host application or a, a bunch of host applications. You can also do 3D Studio Max and Unity as well. Now if we just take this and position this, we can just put that in the corner. Um, now in this case the animation probably doesn't make sense and then just like before the point colors are not working uh, we would have to solve those problems a different way. Now we're bringing a second version of the tool in here and this time we're going to again do a custom object and we're going to do it with the uh, these shapes in the middle. We're going to redo this platform um, using Houdini. So we're going to go in and um, the way you do this first is again custom shape. Uh, so now nothing's there and then we go geometry, we're going to go world, outliner input, start selection and we're going to go up here and we're just going to select, shift select everything in there and use that selection. And it sort of has it offset so we can just move that back into place. Um, just move that back into place. It's because the original asset was sort of offset from, from the location of the files. And yeah, and there we go. And then we can go and take those original files. And um, if we scroll somewhere, there's an option here for um, actor hidden in game and visible. So we can make it invisible and have it invisible in the game. Now, once we have that set up, uh, we can take the Brickify tool and we press play. Uh, now we can walk around and there are the brickified shapes that we just built uh, now as part of the game. So it's pretty exciting to use these digital assets in different kinds of applications using the Houdini engine. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this project and had a, a good time learning about what digital assets, nodes, networks, and digital assets can do for you.